Surprise, motherfucker. Yes, sir. We're officially back at it. This is Bug Nice coming at you with the Medicom Mafex X-Men's Wolverine figure review. Let's do it. This ain't for no scalper. You a scalper? The fuck out shit. This one for them real collectors. That's army building and posing figures. Marvel legends. Imports. Many may be out fucking with them. Hype beast we know about. You. Stay buying figs don't. And a quick look at the artwork on the side of the box, you can see it says Wolverine, there's the X-Men logo, one picture of the figure, more the same on the opposite side, another picture of the figure, Mafex number 96, the X logo, let's get this bad boy open, and see what's what. Alright, here we go, Medicom Mafex's fifth comic based, or should I say comic accurate offering from this particular imprint, let's do the math, I think the first one was Gwenpool, we got the Amazing Spider-Man, we got Deadpool, we got Venom, and now Wolverine. Cyclops will be our sixth offering, and I'm probably the last to the party as far as uh, reviewers taking a look at this figure. At least the reviewer, <laughs> the reviewers that count, I guess, maybe except for Shardimus. I'm always before Shardimus with certain things. But so I just thought I'd give you my quick little take on this figure. I've been messing around with him for a few days before I decided to sit down and actually take a closer look at him with you guys. And I'm not going to hold you up. It's a really nice looking figure. The feel of it, the way it moves, it's a very good figure. Now, is it worth for Marvel Legends uh, if you are plugged into the Japan trade and you get it directly from Japan or maybe five if you get it domestically I don't know let's let's see let's walk through this and see what's what but beforehand I was a little skeptical about certain things and I do have some issues there are some some problems with the figure but I don't think the uh, cons outweigh the pros here so let's look at his accessories Straight out of the package, he comes with two fists attached with the claws retracted, and these look pretty good. You know, sometimes with Mafex, I'm not really happy with the gappage between the end of the hand uh, and where the wrist starts, and this is really no different. I'm not really happy with the way that ball peg looks, but because the colors all match up here, it's not too bad. And there's a quick look at those wrist pegs, typical Mafex wrist pegs. They are thin. You should be careful, they are delicate. He's also packed in with two hands that are open with the fingers slightly spread. You can get them to hold certain items depending on what that item might be. But I had no issue swapping these on and these look fine. And then he's packed in with the two fists with the claws extended. And this is where my first complaint comes in. I do think that these claws are just a tad bit too long. It's a bit exaggerated. Now we have seen artwork in the past where Wolverine's claws have been very long and exaggerated like this. But I would have preferred if they didn't really go that route with this particular figure. I mean if you take these off and you just look at the length of his arm and the length of these claws where is that even coming from where's all that coming from and I can remember back in the day when I was a kid people making that comment about Wolverine's claws and some of the artwork that we saw back in the 90s and stuff like that but the actual look of them and the feel is pretty cool they are sturdy they are probably better than any Legends claws we've received so far except maybe the X-Force version um, but you know I do like the finish on them I like the paint they look they look good but I do think they are a bit too long and before I move on, it should be noted that complaint number two does come in the form of a QC issue with the arm. I think this is across the board, but this does pop off pretty easily here. Um, and this does disconnect. So, you know, I would rather it be this situation than a break. But for $80, $90, $100, it's still unacceptable. Now, it does reattach with no issue and you still do get the full posability out of the arm. It's not a huge deal, but it's not something that I'd like to see. Just taking a close look at this head sculpt before I swap on the additional head sculpts he's packed in with. You can see a very small little nick right there, almost in the center of the head here. Um, so, you know, that's probably unique to my version. I've seen some people complaining about the mask, but I do like the look of this. Again, I'm not sure which artist they may have been trying to model this figure after, but it does look very 90s-esque. I do like the look of it. It looks pretty good to me. The face looks good. Maybe they could have put a little stubble or something on the chin, but it's a decent looking head sculpt. I'm not mad at this. And there's a look at that neck peg, which looks like the typical Mafex neck peg they've been using with these comic base characters. Uh, it's got a little curvature there so you can, uh, you know, get a little more range out of the head and neck. And then he's packed in with an additional head scope where he's showing his teeth. The teeth are kind of gritted and he looks angry. And this one looks good too. I'm not mad at this one either. 
Uh, I don't see any. Well, I do see a little nick right here in the front. But otherwise than that, I think this looks good too. And then finally, he's packed in with this cow, which I think looks really good as well. And an unmasked head, so let's get that on. Obviously, you can place this like so. And just so you can see, there's the other arm popping off, so it happens on both arms. And then there's a look at the unmasked head, which I think looks very nice. Uh, I do think that the hair probably could have been just a bit darker. Um, I think it would actually brought out the facial features more if there was a little darker paint, but I do like the old school vibe with the uh, black, mostly blue with some black highlights. You know, that's how they used to draw Wolverine in the 90s with those blue highlights in the hair. A lot of the characters actually, but I do think this looks very good. I think this might be maybe one of Mafex's best comic based uh, unmasked heads. Uh, and I do really like the way the cowl is sitting in the back. You can see the big flaps from the mask. That looks great. You might have to do a little number to get this to kind of sit flush around the bottom of his neck. But I do think this looks very good. Good job on this. Just taking a closer look at the deco and the paint. I wasn't really a fan of this uh, sort of shade of blue. Uh, you know, it looks metallic in certain places and the paint looks marbleized in certain places too. But it does look real good in hand and I'm sure it'll show up really nice on pictures. Well, I know this because I've seen some pictures already. I would have liked a different shade of blue. Um, and I still feel that way. But overall, the paint work here is, is pretty good. Nice job. I don't see too many paint imperfections. I like the shade in here, bringing out the definition in the muscles and, uh, you know, they put hair on his arms and that looks great. This is a very good looking figure. I can't lie to you. I do think that maybe his thighs could have been just a little bit thicker. Here I was just the other day talking about John Wick's thighs and how he had thunder thighs and I didn't like that. But for Wolverine, who's supposed to be like short and stocky, I think they probably could have put a little more girth on the thighs here, but that's pretty much it in terms of uh, accessories. He has packed them with a stand. You know, all Mafex figures come with a stand, and I always say that, and then I never show it. And for the price, this is not enough accessories. He should have definitely been packed in with some different hands. I think I remember in the early, early images that they showed him with the cigar. No, maybe that was the Rebel Tech version, but it would have been nice if they packed in a cigar. Mafex could do that. They packed in a cigarette, a cigarette lighter, if I'm not mistaken with some other figures the cigarette lighter for sure um so they could have packed in a cigar and another set of hands or uh, maybe one right hand that could hold a cigar and maybe another additional head for the cigar if that was the case but definitely not enough accessories for eighty dollars ninety dollars a hundred dollars more hands should have been packed in at the very least and taking a quick look at the articulation so you saw how the head and neck move you can uh, pop this head off and kind of rotate that neck peg around how you see fit for a better range he does get a good range of motion up and down the head and neck move independently so it is a very good range left to right swivel pivot all of that good stuff no problem with the head and neck uh, with the cow on or off no issues there shoulders are on a ball joint they're gonna come up pretty far as you can see the uh, flaps on his uh, costume here are a separate part it's on like a little ball peg here on the back so you can kind of rotate that how you see fit this butterfly joint is pretty nice you know it moves up up and down left and right you get the full range of motion there on the shoulder so that's great the upper torso can move as does the lower torso so you can get a really good ab crunch forward and back i'm sure if you like push that to the limit it'll pop out the belt is a separate part the x on the belt that's great but you can turn them at the waist as well. Uh, I guess you can call that a T-joint at the pelvis. Sort of like the old uh, drop-down method from SHF, I guess. But probably a better range of motion. So the legs do come up pretty far. You can see that barbell joint inside there in the pelvis area. So you can actually get rotation at the upper thigh. You do get a nice double jointed knee. I kind of do wish there was rotation at the boot. It's not really necessary, but just for that little added bit of articulation, that would have been cool. You get a hinge. You get a nice deep pivot on the foot. There's a toe joint as well. I just skipped over the rest of the arms, but there's a double jointed elbow. Swivel at the upper bicep. Swivel and a hinge on the wrist. So really nice range of motion on this guy. He does move around really nicely. All right, let's do some comparisons. On the left, we have the Tiger Stripe Wolverine from the Love Triangle 3-pack. And on the right, we have the Apocalypse Builder Figure Wave Wolverine. So you can see how the yellows on all three of these differ. You can see the height difference where the Mafex Wolverine is just a tad bit taller than the other two. 
you can see the differences in the mask. I do think that I would have preferred Mafex to be just a bit shorter, kind of in, in step with Marvel Legends, but Mafex is traditionally a little larger scale than, than Marvel Legends, I think. So I guess it kind of works for Mafex's world that they're building. We'll see when I break out the other Mafex figures. But listen, the, the Legends version of Wolverine still holds up as a very solid figure next to the Mafex figure. And taking a look at those claws side by side. So again, you can see how exaggerated the Mafex claws are. Again, they obviously look much better than the Legends version, but I do think there could have been some, <laughs> some compromise here. You know, it could have been just a little bit longer than the Legends version, being as though the Mafex version is taller anyway and then there's a look at the uh, apocalypse builder figure wave version you know those claws differ as far as the color from the uh, box set version just a little bit again legends hasn't really nailed it yet except with the x-force version maybe i should break him out real quick but before i do that here's the first appearance wolverine that uh came in the box set with the hulk and you can see that the deco between these two are kind of similar as far as the the colors the blue the yellow you know obviously they got the black stripes on the first appearance one here but that's how those stack up there you go there's a look at those two side by side so again legends really did a great job with these particular claws i know some people don't really like the stylized look but you know wolverine has had a lot of different looks in the comic uh depending on who was drawing them and this is definitely a look that his claws have had in, in the comics and again you can see the difference in the length and the color and then here's a little comparison line to line. So on the far left is the Yamaguchi Revel Tech Wolverine, and then the Marvel Legends Wolverine, and then we have Mafex, and then on the far right is the Mezco Wolverine. So the Marvel Legends, Mafex, and Mezco are all Tiger Stripe, I guess. The uh, Revel Tech version is more of like the Astonishing X-Men version, but those are Wolverines line to line. We don't have a Wolverine from SH Figure Arts to do a comparison, uh, but but Mafex is looking very good and Legends is still holding its own. And this Mezco Wolverine I've fallen out of love with. It's not really that great of a figure in my opinion. Here's one more claw comparison. So this is the Mezco claws here on the left in comparison with Mafex. See the length there, how that works and the color on the gloves and everything. And then Mafex here, Yamaguchi. So another long exaggerated claw here. We expected that with the Yamaguchi version though. It's supposed to be a little ridiculous. And you can even see the shape is different. And finally, there he is stacked up with other Mafex figures from their comic base line. And this world is starting to come together nicely, starting to look good. I do think now that I have him stacked up with Spider-Man and Deadpool here that Mafex probably still could have made him a tad bit shorter. He could have been about the height of the legend size now that I see him next to, to Spidey and, and Deadpool. And a couple head swaps so you can see him. This is the uh, May shelf, sculpted shelf head here. Doesn't look that great, looks a little small, and it's not really sitting up there right. I guess you could try to finesse it, put a little wax on that ball peg and get the head to sit up just a little bit more. And there's the uh, Ultimate Rider's head, which is a little larger. It looks a little better proportioned with the body, but it doesn't look that good. The aesthetic is not really the same with the Legends heads. This was another custom here. I think this was from my man S13, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, maybe this was from my man uh, Dr. Wolverine. I'm not sure. If you're watching and this is yours, please, please claim it. But, um, you know, sort of in the style of that 90s sort of look with the blue highlights and the black. And proportionately, it looks okay. Another Legends look. I'm not really liking the way any of the Legends ones look. Well, here's another Legends. This is old Toy Biz version, though. If it actually sat on there better, it would be okay. But the uh, peg hole here is not large enough to kind of slip onto this little ball peg. All of the other heads, you know, the hole at the bottom of the head was large enough to just kind of fit it over the entire neck piece. But this one is not really working. If it sat all the way down on there, this one actually might look okay. So if you have this and you want to dremel it, that might be another option. And this is the other sculpted shelf head. This is the uh, Old Man Logan version, which looks okay. Again, it's just, you know, a little, sitting a little low on the neck. But if you wanted to have Old Man Logan reminiscent putting on his old costume, then I guess you could. And a little blast from the past here. This is the old uh, Figma Hulk, just so you can see the height. I got it crunched over a little bit, too. So, there's that. 
And then here is the figure arts version. I think I like this height difference better. I didn't realize how much taller the uh, figure arts Hulk is than the Figma. Not like super taller, but he's bigger. I like that scale better. So just kind of something to look to the future for. I'm sure at some point Mafex will get around to doing a comic based Hulk. So that's how those might stack up size wise. The Medico Mafex Wolverine figure is very attractive. Probably one of Mafex's best just in terms of looks. The additional head sculpts look great. The paint applications look great. The overall sculpt and design is great. But does that sculpt represent a 5 foot 3 inch tall Wolverine from Marvel Comics? I don't think so. As I've stated several times, the claws are too long. There weren't enough accessories. His thighs could have been bigger. There are some QC issues. And does the Marvel Legends version stand up to the Mafex version? Absolutely. Is the Mafex version worth four Marvel Legends figures? Five, maybe? I don't think so. I wouldn't trade in my top five Marvel Legends Wolverine figures for one Mafex figure, but I do understand anybody who still wants to purchase this figure because it's very attractive. The hard truth though is that if you purchase this figure, it's pretty much just a flex. It's not absolutely necessary because they didn't nail it, and the $20 Marvel Legends figure is still just as good. If Marvel Legends can consistently nail the claws on their Wolverine figure, it will be hard to beat as the definitive Wolverine. The Mafex version is not the definitive Wolverine just yet. Now, I will be taking a bunch of pictures with this guy. If you know me, you know I'm all about the aesthetics, so I won't be posing him alongside my Marvel Legends. I'll keep my Legends with my Legends. I will be putting them and pairing them up with more import figures, and that'll pretty much be it. I don't think I'm going to get more playability out of the Mafex version than I will the Marvel Legends version, and that's just what it is. Alright, thanks for hanging out. As always, rate, comment, and subscribe, and until next time, 